Okay, thank you very much, and we're live. So, um, hello everyone, hope you're having a great Wednesday. Um, today, we've got Steve Farrell, he's take, kindly taken 20, 30 minutes out of his incredibly busy schedule to have a chat with us. Um, Steve worked with us a few months back now, um, and arguably had some amazing results working on his mindset, his headspace, but also like building himself a, a, a real resilient toolkit for living life and getting the best out of life. Now, they're my words. I want you to hear from Steve. Um, so we're going to have a little chat to talk through that, what, everything that Steve's sort of accomplished in the programme and what he's doing now since we've left. Um, and hopefully there should be some interesting insights and things for you guys to take on board. So uh, I'll hand it over to you, Steve, just to introduce yourself. I mean, I've already given your name, but like, you know, who are you, what do you do, where are you from, all that kind of stuff. Well, thanks very much, Luke. And good afternoon, everyone. I, and great to be asked uh, to spend a bit of time with everyone to talk through my own learned experience in, in working with Luke and the team a bit more broadly. So my name is Steve Farrell. I'm a partner in a professional services firm. And although I, I live in London, don't let the accent fool you. I'm not from London, from the north of Ireland. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're up the northerners. So yeah. I, I, and I've lived here for about 15, 16 years now or so. Uh, very busy uh, life day to day in and out of work uh, with kids and family and so on. Um, and I've massively benefited, as you, as you know, Luke, over the last year um, on working together through the programme. Okay. Well, thank you for that. So let's let's kind of like sort of take a step back and sort of talk about like, you know, your journey from where we were, where you came from to where you are now. Um, so... If you're shouting in the background, that's just a kid. You know, it's half term, right? So this is this is real life. Um, so um, rewind, probably knocking on twelve months now. Like we, when we first spoke, like, like you probably saw maybe a post of mine on LinkedIn, and I sent you a message. Um, like, what was going on with you when we first spoke? Like, you know, arguably you weren't feeling great. Like, can you give us a bit of context as to what was going on? Yeah, twenty sixth of January, because uh, uh, you know, uh, in main line of work, you got to remember things uh, like this, and uh, I do de definitely remember the day, twenty sixth of January, twenty twenty, and I think as I shared uh, with some of broader network, um, there's a real point at which I had to put my hand up and ask for genuinely, ask for help, uh, and that's a very very tough thing to do, a in main line of work uh be for for me personally but um people talk about life through lockdown and how things got to and so on but when, when i went into lockdown my reaction as someone believe it or not who's naturally a bit more introverted was my way through this was to knuckle down you know work every minute i could you know, power through put everything to the side through everything uh, to to one side and just proved to everyone that I could make this through. Uh, and that led to a increased trajectory on what I do think realistically has been a decade of decline in my own well-being. All right. So that advanced a lot more, frankly, put on a lot of weight, um, a lot more weight than I'd already put on. Um, my own mental well-being was shook to the core um by virtue of living through a lockdown world and me convincing myself that this was the way things had to be um I, absolutely without doubt you have an addictive personality your addictions you know kick in and your reliance on coping mechanisms kick in alcohol was a big one for me and the reality of living with that was was a big deal um although we all lived in one house i was completely disconnected from those who are five feet away from me now uh, and that was a real reality and it was throughout that christmas period where uh, i th i think uh, the realization that actually the way i keep going i might not see 40 45 50. um and i knew that i thankfully have a lot of people who are concerned about that and that was a point where i had to just say stop just stop uh, and ask for help yeah well, thank you for the um, the summarising where you're at and also for being open and honest because I know, like, for a lot of us, like, if we're not feeling great, it's quite easy is the wrong word. But, like, we bottle it up, don't talk about it and sort of just think, like, it's all sort of fine, really. And and, and almost, like, showing what we are using a bit of comedy here, weakness, 
um, is almost seen as a negative, but actually being open and honest and saying, look, I'm not right here and I need some help. But also for you to do that now, Steve, and tell people where you were, that's also very helpful and empowering, I think, because a lot of us get to this state and a lot of, sadly, a lot of the guys I work with are often not in the greatest place when we first speak. And actually it's about saying, okay, well, this, is, this isn't right. I need to make some changes. Um, but the first step, I always say, it's like taking an honest look at yourself and going, right, this isn't great here. What, what do we do, you know? Yeah, I, I mean, you are right. We had a number of chats initially at the start of this. And I remember you talk about practicalities of this stuff, right? Uh, but, you know, and I, well, I often get asked by a lot of people, how did you do it? And this sort of first point of actually realizing where you are right now and, and taking an honest assessment of this is important, right? Because I sort of entered into this process thinking, look, this is I need help, but I don't know what help I need. And nothing can change, by the way. Nothing. My daily dream can be like, yeah. <laughs> this isn't going to happen. And one of the things you did ask me to look at was, you know, start writing stuff down. Or start, I remember I sent photos to you for a week of everything I am. And I thought I was eating all right. And I remember the feedback came back after a week, which was, it's all pretty brown. <laughs> and, you know, and you sort of look back and go, oh, God, that's, that's actually right. Um, you know, and, and it made you have a different sense of perspective on it. But fundamentally, fundamentally, it starts with the empowerment you get by realizing that it is you as the individual. You have to stand up and realize no one else, there's actually no one else when it broke it down, made me be the way that I was mm. as me as an individual. And actually, once you accept that, and in that, recognize your own frailties. Um, the sense of empowerment you have is great because that, therefore it frees you to think, well, if it's me that caused this, it's me that can sort of die. Exactly. And for me, that's that, the way you said there is that's the most empowering thing. I think sometimes when people, when you talk like that, people can think it's, you, it's like tough love or you're sort of saying, oh, it's your fault. Well, well, the truth is, it is, but that's, that doesn't mean you don't need help and it doesn't mean you don't know what to do and it doesn't mean all those things are still true, but fundamentally, you are the cause of your reality, right? Like, we can blame work and stress and business and all the rest of it, but you always have a choice of how you choose to react within any of those circumstances. Now, the whole point of this person we talk about it is you might not be aware of it and you don't know how to fix it, and that's all true, but if you just go, okay, this is on me, fine, but like you said, that's actually really empowering because, well, actually, I've got it within me to, to, to sort it all out, and that's 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 the best bit, I think. Yeah, and and it isn't as we sort of talked through initially at the start. You know, any of us in considering any part of this, I think, needs to get in the reality of what what you do and, and how you present yourself physically and your weight, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, frankly, it comes as a secondary view here of, or it comes as the byproduct, frankly, of of recognizing, probably facing some home truths about yourself mm -hmm. and learning about yourself as an individual. I've learned more about me in the last year in, in working together than I have done the last 35. And and that that, that has been really important because you it's, you start to improve relationships with everyone mm -hmm. um, uh, across the board, which is probably the reality of this been one of the most beneficial parts of the last year. Nice. So let's let's sort of we'll jump about a bit here. That's kind of where we started, Steve, which was like 2021 um, January. Like, let's fast forward to now. It's a big old time gap as well, so we can dig into the bits. Like, what what has been your through the process? What do you think the, the biggest results or the you know the, the headlines that you think? Yeah, I'm proud of X, Y, and Z. What are they? And then we can sort of maybe dig into some of the processes and what we did and how we got there to sort of achieve that because I think that's quite a, a nice narrative. Uh, so good question. Headlines uh, coming out of it uh, on where I am a sort of a year later. Um, my ability to accept in the self for who I am, faults and all, uh, has massively improved. Um, second point, I now have an outward view of the world, which I worry less about my health and well-being over the next decade, right? So I, I, now, I have taken control of my well-being and health. Yeah. And therefore, I feel completely different about the outlook for me and family and friends over the next 20 years, which is great. Um, three, 
my own well-being and relationships with others in and out of work was transformed. Uh, that has empowered me to be, a, I hope, a better leader in what I do in, in and outside of my, my sort of professional life. And fourth, there's no denying it, I've lost weight. Yeah. Um, and I feel a lot physically stronger and healthier. And that's it. The last point is I've, I've got back on the bike, which I give up, I think, as a, a few people might know, six years ago. Um, and, and that's been just really, really good uh, overall. Nice. Is that that's awesome? that. Yeah, no, definitely does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's, uh, there's, there's, there's lots going on there. So um, let's talk about them. They're the headlines. Lost a chunk of weight more present mindful and like you know engage with friends family loved ones that whole piece better able to cope and deal with um get the most out of work both i guess from a stress management perspective but also just as a direction and leadership perspective i'm putting a few words in your mouth here but this is what i'm taking from what you've said so that's some really big headlines what have been your key takeaways in how you have enabled yourself to achieve that and i know there's been a lot we've worked on a lot we've worked through but like what What's 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 enabled that to happen? I guess as a process, but then maybe some like some some of the day to day stuff that's that's working there as well. Uh, yeah, and I for anyone who knows me um, knows that I I like to work with practical things that actually make a difference and not sort of uh, well intended words and meanings. Um, so a, a number of things that have have got me to that process is a firstly this importance of writing stuff down uh, about how you feel in points of time is really empowering <laughs> um a, a lot of what we worked on in the exercises we did and um, by exercise i don't mean physical exercise um but the more my, mindset when, coaching when, yeah, when you lose it when 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 you you've had a bad day when you're going through stressful periods standing back and writing it down and figuring out why the whole journaling process and then playing that back in your mind is actually quite a, quite a powerful. Very difficult sometimes for, frankly, males to, 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 to do that um, or, or partake in that exercise or even talk about it. It's a bit like, what, yes. journaling, right? You're feeling right. What are you on about? Like, That's yeah. massively, right? Um, I, I think, secondly, this bit around a challenge in yourself where you tell yourself you can't do something. Like, I can't change my diary. I can't do this. Work's making me do that. Uh, there's no way I can take a Friday off, right? Uh, because of insert, right? So at that point in time, saying, well, why not? Well, why? What, what, what? So constantly challenge yourself to do that. And for me, that manifested itself in exercise. You know, I make no bones about it. I, at my worst, I was maybe doing 800 steps a day. I mean, uh, really quite poor um, in terms of my own physical well-being and therefore this sort of bit of said no one's asking me to sit and smash out a hit uh, one hour hit session somewhere at some crazy place at some crazy price but I can walk up and down the stairs 10 times and even if that's all I do that's all I do for today at least I've done something right so this bit of going sorry we can all do something I remember you said to me all day, like go and do five squats when you're brushing your teeth and it, it sounds so small, but yeah. from that, I'm now up at 5.40 every day doing, actually wanting to do a bit of an exercise routine that's in, it. In, in a year. And, and those small bits really make a big difference. I think that's that's an interesting one to dig into because I think a big one, loads of people say, right, I haven't got time. I just don't have time to do any of this stuff. And that could be exercise. It could be being more mindful about yourself. And you would definitely, I think we'd agree, you would be someone who would have said that. Um, and that's a great example of more of a practical one. But like, when what would you say to someone who says, "Oh, you know, I'm overwhelmed, I'm too busy, I've just got no time for this," or, "Or it's the sort of thing I'll, I'll start it in a couple of months because I might be quieter then," and you know, whatever. Like what, that whole not got time narrative. What would you say to that? Right, really clear. Stop and start at night. Yeah. And start it small, but because. Every every time is definitely precious. Time is the big, big, most precious commodity we have. And for me, the big learning point was: it's absolutely okay to take time for yourself, not for anyone else, but but for you, right? And that might be time 
to go for a walk. That might be time where you want to listen to kids read, but that no that time is yours and it's rightfully yours and everyone should have that time. But the only person who's going to make it is you. Yeah. Um, and I think where people, and you, you tell me if you agree with this, Steve, where I think a lot of people fall down is, let's say the time is for exercise. It's an easy example. I just can't spend an hour and a half in the gym. Don't then. Can you do five squats when you brush your teeth? Yep. We'll do that. That's not enough. Well, it's better than fuck all, which is what you're doing right now, you know? I, I, I've never spent an hour and a half in the gym in the last... No. <laughs> exactly. And what if I'd said to you, Steve, right, right, next week, hour and a half in the gym, you'd have been like, has this guy gone mental? <laughs> like, no, and, 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 and even now, I wouldn't want to, no. right? But but because I can do, go downstairs and run, literally run around my kitchen for 10 mm. minutes, get a sweat up, and I know it'll have made a bit of a difference on the day. Right. And 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 that's that sort of bit where you know no one's got a lot of time right now, but the time that we do have, we can absolutely make use of it. You know, another practical thing, Luke, that I did, I start my phone all the time, all my, all the time. This obsession with phone, and you know, so I now set a timer and I monitor myself every week on my screen time. You can it can tell you, yeah. and I want that percentage to go down week on week. And then I stop looking at my phone after 9.30. Just challenge yourself to do it. It makes a massive difference. Because then you find you've got 10 minutes to run around the kitchen. Exactly. And and, and I think you said there about starting small. Often, like a lot of the guys we work with are very, very successful career-wise, driven, you know, focused. Um, and the thought of, oh, well, just doing a small something, isn't it's it's not good enough. Or the ego gets in the way. goes, well, I, I should be doing more. Well, but like, actually, bringing it back and us starting really small like we did with you, actually now, what you're achieving now, if I'd have said again, when we first started, right, Steve, this is what you're doing, both from exercise perspective, how you're monitoring and ma- managing eating healthily, your balance around alcohol, how you're using your time to decompress after work. All these, if I'd gone, do all that, you'd have just gone, whoa. But you build up incrementally and then all of a sudden you realise, I'm actually, you've actually got more time because in doing that creates more time elsewhere, right? That's the... Uh, yeah, yeah, and fundamentally you've got to start with that, Richard. There's no magic pill here. There's no light switch. We, yeah. we live in a world now where everyone wants instant gratification, instant result. Um, the instant result here is more in a, a mindset change because you're in this for the long term. I'm even in it now. We don't work together now. Um, a, a, on the program but but i know that the change that i've had to go through i have to constantly work on but that's okay i've settled with myself now because it makes in myself i feel so much better in doing so and those small bits over time they all add up massively add up. that's that's an interesting one to dig into so there's the sustainability bit because we haven't been working like together you know like commercially or whatever you have in the program for a couple two three months now right so um or longer even sorry so, like, A, how are you feeling about maintaining? But B, something you touched on there, I think one way people can look at maybe a plan or an approach or something like the way I work, it's like, oh, there's a magical 12 weeks and it's all going to be perfect to the end of it and then you stop. Now, I'm fundamentally, like, against that whole way of thinking and way of operating. It's not about having some magical perfect 12 weeks and then just going back to revert to normal. Because the reason you are where you are today, if you're not feeling looking great, <laughs> is because of everything you're doing every fucking day. And if you're not changing that and making it last, then you're just going to go back to tag. You are the sum product of your daily actions and choices. Mm. And if you are able to address that, that's it. So something you said there about you are doing it regularly and you do want to continue and yeah, you have to check and you want to build, you know, like some people might be like, fucking hell, what, what does that mean? I'm going to do crazy stuff for the rest of my life. And I would say no, but w- what, what would you say to that? Or what, what you know, about that? I, I, I think there's a couple of things in it. Um, the the what what we worked on was not in any way short termist uh, and frankly even from day one when i uh, you know i came and said this is what i want to do and you know the reality of the situation is often very difficult different uh because those things don't happen overnight yeah. um, and actually what this is about is having a toolkit for a longer term view much longer term view whether it's 12 weeks to, you know a year 10 years right this is a long-term strategic view on what you want to do um, with yourself but you also have to go back to what i said at the start is that 
you know, individually, it's your own actions uh, now and over time, right? I, have I failed throughout this program? Of course, absolutely, of course, right? As well, you know it. I, will I fail in the future? A hundred percent, yes. Okay, so, but it's at that point in time where you go, right, well, what are you going to do about it now? Because in times gone by, I would have just added to my old sense of failure and it would have been on top of, on top of, on top of. Whereas it was actually now, this is more around stand up accent. You recognize it's going to happen, but how are you able to cope on a go forward basis? You know, one of my big models throughout this is everything we're doing over the last year is what I've been training for to, to, to get through what inevitably will happen next. And, and, and just maintaining that focus is crystal. You don't have to go to the gym every day. No. I don't. And but I guess it starts, with, it starts with this and your ability to, to refine things. So, like, you know, there's something we, I talk about a lot and we chat about is like the obstacle is the way. And baked, I think baked into any approach, if you want to help someone change, has to be failure. Because life is failure. Like, ultimately, life is suffering, right? In, in a really, like, bleak philosophical sense. But, like, not, but like, so bad things happen. The oars will happen. If you think 12 weeks or a year, or whatever, it's all going to be unicorns and rainbows. It's absolute nonsense. Yeah. But then what you do and learn, if you want to make changes, has to accommodate that. And if it doesn't, that's it. But not only that, I think what's more empowering is not just accommodate it. It should allow you to learn from those things and then come back better and stronger, right? And that's, for me, that's the one of the most powerful things. Correct. It's like, okay, something didn't work. It went wrong. Wrong. Well, great. Well, what was it? And now, if you've got the tools for self-reflection and understand what's happening, you can go in the future. Well, actually, well, next time I'm putting that situation, I'll do that differently because I'll, I'll, I won't send that email. That was a bit punchy. Maybe I'll send it like this instead. Or um, actually, if I've gone out and drunk X, Y, and Z, I'll feel like this next time, and that's okay. So next time, I'll change me this way. So there's countless examples of that throughout. When I say your Steve, I mean the real you, not just you, are one's life where these things happen. I think, and once you become aware of those. And I'm telling you now, I'd rather you what you want your words, but like I feel that like that's what allows that sustainability because you become aware of how you act and tick. And yeah, it's never gonna be perfect. I'm far from it. But like perfect's the enemy good enough and it doesn't need to be, I think, you know. And and you know, and at that last bit you said, I think it's in the end, it doesn't need to be, right? Because we all search for this sense of perfection and and I think you've got to sort of stand back and look at I mean, the realities of it are very different. But self-control, self-awareness, the ability to sort of stop and go, okay, that didn't work out the way anyone wanted it to. Why? Um, and what positive change can you make? On regardless of what, you, what you're dealing with, I, I think is massive. Again, that word empowering, right? Mm. It, it takes you back to being able to sort it out properly. Yeah. And for me, that's, it's, it's, it's empowering getting yourself to an empowered place. Like the, the whole thing of like, if you're too busy, you're stressed at work, you've got loads on your family. You know, it's like they're external events that are external to you. And you can blame these events for you like being in this situation you are. And okay, at, at one level, it's true. Like you are really busy. You have got kids you've got to run around. You know, you do like social events, you do like drinking, all that sort of stuff. But what you're then doing is handing your autonomy and self-efficacy over to those things. If you, if, if you take a step, step back and say, well, actually, what can I do given my environment? And like the whole process we've been through, Steve, and that's how I work is helping people do that. But once you start to do that, it feels good. And even if it's a small thing, because you are taking control. When you're out of control and it feels like events and things are just happening at you, that's not a great place to be. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's no doubt a year ago I felt like a crisp packet in the wind. <laughs> All right. And now I feel like in the wind. So that's amazing, yeah. you sort of, sort of stand back and go, well, hang on. Nope, not happy with that. I'm going to stop this. And then what is it bit by bit you can work through and go, well, actually, I, you know, if you really, really, really challenge yourself, do you have to go to that meeting? Do you really have to drink that extra glass of wine? Hmm. You know, and it's that, that's the bit that kicks in and goes, oh, there's a bit of self-control here now, more self-control, more self-awareness, and that makes the big difference. Something that's come up with some of the guys finishing the program recently, and I think we touched on a little bit, and I'm also aware of time, Steve. So if you need to get off, we can we can wrap up real, real quicker. Um, was um, around pushing your comfort zone a little bit, and actually doing things that are a little bit challenging, and being in a state where not constantly, oh my god, but having things that challenge you a little bit, be that personal goals, you know, practical, whatever. Um, 
and how that makes you feel within that environment. What would you say to that? A, a crucial element to it is is trying to push for um, uh, trying to push yourself to be a better version of yourself, right? And a very practical example of this, yeah, you know, I hate and um, hate doing a lot of physical exercise, but I I, you know, I remember you asked me to do five push ups, and I mean I could I just I couldn't do it, I just couldn't do it, and I don't mind saying that in front of everyone, I couldn't do it. I was on my hands and knees in front of the two kids, right, who saw me not able to do it. And it's a very personal thing. You, know, you, you do feel bad. You feel bad. Um, but time and time and time, keep practicing, keep doing it. I'm not crackling my every day. And I'm not just, you have to do this. Burpees was the same thing. You remember the burpee challenge? Absolutely, violently disagreed with that. I, but then over Christmas, I did a reverse, uh, a, a reverse, a advent calendar. So I did yeah. the birthday. That was off your back when we were working together. You just, right. just for everyone who was watching this, Steve I'm messaged awesome. me um, at Christmas. He said, Luke, guess what I'm going to do? I was like, what's this? Well, you tell him. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so so I, I did a, re a reverse ad burpee advent calendar. So I did one burpee on the 1st of December, ramping up to what in my view was, I'm going to enjoy my Christmas dinner. But I left on 25 burpees in the morning. Um, and so and talk about a change in the transformation in the year from the 26th of January to the 25th of, of uh, December, going from 800 steps a day, not leaving the house, and as we already discussed, we're going to labour it, not a great way to doing 25 fucking burpees on Christmas Day. That's a that's a pretty big shift, I would say. Off well, your own back, by the way, with, with no, no one else making you do that apart from you. Yeah. You know? yeah. That's good. So you have to challenge yourself. And, and, and look, it's not all about exercise and stuff, but I think that for me, that's just a perfect example of how in working on yourself, changing your mindset and your whole outlook, you put yourself in a situation where you're completely taking control of your, your Christmas day and you started it with an absolute bang and dollop of purpose. Like, yeah. amazing. So, Steve, I know you're super, super busy, so I don't want to take up too much more of your time. Um, thank you for this. It's been super helpful. I've got a couple more questions, if you're okay to... to, sure. to the first one um, is, what was your... If you can say one thing, what was your biggest takeaway from this whole journey and process that you've gone through? Let's say someone's thinking about starting the process of self-development, regardless of me or whatever, because I'm going to ask a question about me in a second. But like, let's say someone was thinking about that and they're in, they were in, they're in your shoes that you were in back in January and they're like, oh my God, I've got time. Like, What's your biggest takeaway or what one thing would you say to that person? Invest in yourself because you deserve it. And there are many other people who want you to do this. Okay, awesome, that's great. And then the second question is, let's say we've had a great chat, you know, um, let's say someone's watching this thinking, oh, I might give Luke a nudge to, um, to book in the chat, or I'm not sort of sure, it sounds okay, but I don't really know what it's all about. Um, I'm a bit on the fence as to maybe working with, with Luke, but uh, you know, what would you say to someone who's considering um, working with me or, or will be intrigued to work with me? I think, it, and I think about my own lived experience in this, right? As someone who sort of looked um, and was scared, uh, frankly, to do this, uh, we all have a fear of doing it. There's an absolute wealth of opportunity by just having a chat. Don't be afraid to put your hand up, um, have a discussion. I reach out, Luke, as you know, to loads of people who've been through the program, um, the, the people who've been there, and um, make a count is, is what I would say, uh, because there's, there's absolutely no harm in it, no harm in it at all. Awesome. Thank you. Well, on that note, Steve, as we discussed, very busy, time poor. I'll let you get off. Um, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. I hope it's been helpful and insightful for anyone watching. If anyone is interested in having a chat with me about what I do and how I work, like results like you know Steve's discussed already, um, drop a note in the comments, or if you're not comfortable doing that, ping me a direct message on any of the socials, uh, and we can have a chat and get back to you. Um, in the meantime, thank you so much, guys. Have a great Wednesday. Take care. Take care.